Talking about children being sexually exploited or trafficked is a confronting thought and a very big issue that our world is facing right now. Joining us on The Informer is a man with 21 years experience extracting kidnapped and trafficked children from the most dangerous parts of the world. Founder and CEO of Project Rescue Children, Adam Whittington. Welcome to the program, Adam. Thank you, and thanks for having me on. Well, thank you for being here. It is an uncomfortable conversation for many people, but one that uh, we certainly think needs to be discussed. Can you give us an idea of the uh, scope of the problem? Well, child trafficking and exploitation, it's, uh, it's no secret now. It's, uh, it's a $150 billion industry a year, you know, surpass the, the weapons and, and the drugs trade. So it's, uh, it's definitely an issue that it's a worldwide issue that needs to be addressed uh, much more than what it is. And are children being trafficked from Australia or within Australia, or is it only something that happens overseas? No, it happens within Australia. Now, you have to sort of look at geographic and location-wise of each country, because each country has uh, more of a problem with it. Some don't uh, so much. But as an example, Australia uh, is, is an island. Um, so the trafficking rates uh, to and from Australia is not as great as, say, the EU, where all the countries are connected. It's easily to pass through. The States, America, you have, you know, uh, Mexico joined to it as well as South America. So uh, geographically located wise, Australia is quite in a good position, really, because you just don't have the high volumes of trafficking uh, to and from Australia as other countries and regions around the world. And in Australia, we always hear about pedophiles travelling to Southeast Asia. Is that... Would you say that's the uh, dominant place where this is taking place or is there somewhere in the world that unfortunately it's even worse? Yeah, a lot of the spotlight predominantly over the last say 10, 10 or so years has always been on Southeast Asia. Uh, and rightfully so, there is a big problem there, uh, Thailand, Cambodia, uh, et cetera. But the, the, the world has closed its eyes to so many horrific uh, locations that pedophiles travel to in order to sexually abuse and rape uh, local children. Now, we work a lot in Myanmar, which is just north of Thailand, old Burma, uh, as well as Kenya, Russia, uh, Romania. And these countries are, are horrific with the volume of pedophiles traveling. As an example, to Kenya, you know, you have Mombasa, on the East Coast, it's, it's, it's a great uh, holiday destination, beautiful beaches, uh, it's cheap, the food's, you know, everything's cheap. So it's a prime, it's a prime area that pedophiles will go and they do go for the sole purpose of, well, most of the world call it sex tourism. Mm -hmm. uh, we call it rape tourism because there's nothing sexual about it. Uh, a young child being raped by a Western pedophile, it's, it's, it's not sexual, it's, it's rape. So uh there are there are worse you know i've been to southeast asia a lot and um i can honestly say that the places we work in uh, are far worse than southeast asia it's just the media focus more on and it's easier to focus on southeast asia do you think part of that is because a lot of the australian pedophiles travel to southeast asia because it's closer to Australia versus traveling further to Europe or Africa? True, that's very true. Um, but in the last couple of years, I think it was two, two years ago, uh, it was a world first that the Australian government introduced uh, a new law that any sex offenders registered on the sex offenders register, um, they are not allowed, they're banned from traveling overseas. So that has drastically reduced Australian pedophiles traveling to Thailand or Cambodia for a week or two just to rape children. Um, it has dropped dramatically and it's a great, uh, a great initiative and law that the Australian government did and, and the rest of the world should follow introducing the same legislation. It actually, I think 
in all my conversations with you, it's the first time I've smiled because it is a wonderful thing. But I do imagine that on the flip side of having this wonderful legislation, that also pushes these people online and also looking even more within their own communities. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's, this is a topic, this is an issue, child trafficking and exploitation. It is not going to go away. But we have to fight harder. We have to bring everybody together and the government must make it a priority uh, to help children. Um, so absolutely, within Australia, the biggest problem um, is online grooming, which is where paedophiles go to groom Australian children online in an attempt to actually try and meet them in person eventually to sexually abuse, rape them, or even worse. Now, in some of the conversations we've had, and certainly a lot of the research that I've done, obviously the way trafficking, exploitation, um, and rape happens, it, it differs from area to area. But one of the things that you had mentioned to me previously was in Russia, children are literally snatched off the streets. Yeah, different, to see different uh, geographics, different areas happen. Um, the biggest problem within Australia is online grooming. And this is where the paedophiles sit. Uh, and that is the biggest problem without doubt within Australia and New Zealand, as an example. Uh, you have places like Russia, it's old school. Um, so children are being snatched off the street by paedophiles. It's still happening. It's happening in Europe. Uh, you only need to go to places like Romania, which, are, as far as I'm concerned, is ground zero for all human trafficking throughout Europe. Um, these places are still, you know, a long way behind, say, Australia um, in those terms. So uh, it depends where it's happening. But Russia, yeah, people, are, children in particular, are getting snatched off the street, you know. Um, thousands and thousands of children go missing not just in Russia, but every country. And, and it's all just kept quiet. And I mean, this feels like such a gruesome question, but are those children kept within Russia or they're sent throughout Europe or to different countries or we, don't, we just don't know? This is why we never, we never touch base on statistics because okay. statistics really, it, it, it gives you an idea, but is that idea true and correct so we stay away from statistics mm -hmm. but to answer the question yes and no children are the ones who are being snatched off the streets in russia are usually kept in uh, a place with a pedophile continually raped for, for so long uh, but others do travel and get trafficked through to belarus ukraine um and then on to europe so yes and no is the answer to that Okay, so while all of this is incredibly daunting, we are going to leave this part of the conversation where it is and we are going to come back for part two where we talk about what people can do in their day-to-day -day lives to protect their own children and possibly somebody else's. So we'll be right back with Adam Whittington for part two.